Are you all right? Yeah. I took most of it. it. Just snuck up on me. That damaged your suit. Energy dampening is down to 60%. flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Cholak can... Please advise. 
We have to release this ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring the our option. option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Acting Captain Jara Rydek, be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! Ah! Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! Grab my hand! I got you. Thank you. Plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. the auxiliary hatch.
You go first. What? Let me save your neck this time. No time to fight me on this. Get in there! You better be right behind me. Here, let me help you. Medical, we've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. We'll see you at sick bay. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? Respectfully, Captain. I made the right choice given the information I had- You disobeyed my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well! That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest, so here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. You weren't on board and you didn't have all the information, so I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to... You did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command, as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, 
knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Hendar. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh, you don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on her, but she'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're... Rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times.
I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. A major innovation. Something he can put his name on. But the more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Complete the diagnostic sequence and this shuttle will be cleared for service. Yes, sir. Storm in the Hotari region will interfere with our transporters. So we need all available shuttlecraft in working order. Excuse me, Commander Trobach. Petty Officer Maris. I will leave you to your work. I stopped by Sitke and saw Nili. I figured you'd want to know. Did the doc get her fixed up? She's stable. But there's something about the storm's radiation that's making it hard to heal the energy burns. That doesn't sound good. She's toughing it out. Dr. Duval said she'll be back on duty soon, though. Come on. I have to run the final diagnostic. I can't stay long. I've got a long to-do list before we get to Hotari, and things are piling on faster than I can check them off. We're making all our last-minute checks in security, too. Tactical and security are short-staffed. Well, nothing's ever 100%, but we'll be good to go. And if you wait until you are ready, it's probably too late. Which is why I didn't want to wait for just the right time. I had a chance to think about this while I was away. Then you and Millie almost got killed out on the hall. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. Miranda. Is everything alright? 
Yeah, I'm fine. Maybe even better than fine. What I'm trying to say is, we've been really good friends for a long time. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? We don't have to put too much pressure on it. Let's just see where this goes. I like that. Definitely felt some pressure coming down to see you. These are uncharted territories. I'd call it a chemistry experiment. You know, with us. Inquiring minds are gonna want to know about this, so... Do you tell Nilly, or do I? I wouldn't worry about that. Level 1 diagnostic complete. I have to get back to that to-do list. They're probably looking for me. Can't blame them. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of war. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. 
Commander Ryder, plot an intercept course. On it. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock? Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Well, let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer... Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, if I may say so. Well, it wasn't all me. I got some help from upstairs. A bombastic approach to clearing debris. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Otari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Well, onboard diagnostics can be wrong. I can take a closer look at your shuttle systems to get to the bottom of it. Hmm. I would appreciate that. Take readings run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Spock, 
My senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. We're all curious about the future, Ambassador. Specifically, what exactly are we getting involved in here? We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. What are the Hotari defensive capabilities? Do they stand a chance to hold on to the mines now that they've taken them? It is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would prevail against the Lydian fleet in open war. But it would have been equally unlikely to predict they could take possession of the mines until they did just that. Which leaves many unanswered questions. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective after all. That is correct. If we could convince them, it would restore the peace. But we would need the Hotari to accept a difficult compromise. Made all the more difficult by the emotions flaring on both sides, no doubt. Neither the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation. So we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. We could use that as leverage with the Illidians. They'll want the Federation to continue buying from them. There might be something to that, Commander. Putting that on the table could make the Hotari more hostile. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. If it's keeping the two sides talking instead of shooting at each other, that actually helps us negotiate a peace. And we'll take advantage of that as long as it works in our favor. And when it doesn't? All the more reason to learn as much about it as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught unprepared should the energy anomaly continue to fluctuate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. 
We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly knows how to say the right things. At least when she wants to. It would be unconventional. I'm honored to be included in the negotiation process. You are not just included. You are instrumental. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it.